if you are a baptized Christian or you receive communion normally in your home church, you're welcome to do so here. When it comes time for communion, we will line up at the rail, and I will offer you some bread, and someone else will come behind me with some wine. And you can either dip the wine in, which is called a tainting, or you can take a drink from the cup, or you can just say amen and let the cup pass you by. If you're not baptized and you want a blessing, just cross your arms over your chest like so, and you can get a blessing. All right? St. Peter's is situated on land that was lived and traveled on by many different tribes, including the Hohokam, the Otham Jewett, the Sokburi, the Akamel Otham. We respectfully acknowledge and honor all tribal communities, past and present, for their ongoing and fundamental relationship with this land and this region. At this time, I'd like to ask that you make sure your cell phones are on silent and take a moment to calm your heart and your mind as you prepare for service.
last reading is Zechariah chapter 9, 9 to 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of the mountains. Lo, your king comes to you, a triumph and victorious. Is he humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, on a fowl of a donkey? He cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nation. His dominion shall be from the sea, from sea to sea, and from the river to the end of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set the prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will assure you double. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you, God. Psalm 145, read by half verse. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone. And his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord. And your faithful servants are bless you. We make known the glory of your kingdom. And speak of your power. That the peoples may know your power. And the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words. And merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are out of hand. Romans 7, 15 to 25. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not know what I want. What I do, very <clears throat> thing I hate. Now that I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that, <clears throat> no, no longer I that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing dwells, good dwells within me, that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not want, do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want to do is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be the law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight the law of God in the inmost myself. But I see my members never <clears throat> another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who shall rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Neither eating nor drinking. 
And they say, yes, a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christianity. Well, yeah. But why is it such a big deal that we have to forgive others? 
Well, Matthew tells us a lot about how much God wants to be in relation with us. We've talked about that. God is closer than we think. God is more interested in relationship with us than we are with him. And God is telling us that God is merciful. God forgives. God gives grace. And so when we don't forgive others, we're saying we know better than God how to treat one another. Which is always a risky proposition. So, in today's gospel story, Jesus is talking about this yoke. And what is he talking about there? Well, in other places in the Gospel of Matthew, he actually calls out the Pharisees specifically for placing the yoke of the law on the shoulders of the people and how that burden is crushing them. Just as Paul is complaining about not being able to follow those 600 plus laws, Jesus calls the Pharisees out for the same thing. How did they get 600 plus laws anyway? It started with the Ten Commandments. Where did the rest of them come from? <laughs> Well, it came from the fathers of the church. They kept going over the Bible. They found more and more things that looked like sins to them. These are sins, and these are sins, and these are sins, and you're going to be a sinner if you don't do all of these 600 plus things. And Jesus says, no, no. <clears throat> Get rid of that yoke of the law. Instead, take my yoke upon you, and be like me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. And my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He's asking us to live by faith. Faith in him, faith in God, and faith in that relationship that God wants with us. And a big part of that relationship is attached to that humility, that humbleness, and that's mercy, grace, and forgiveness. So what's the difference between all those? They, they sound very similar, right? Mercy is when you have authority. You have the right to punish somebody for something they've done, and you don't. That's mercy. Grace is when you see someone or hear of someone doing something <clears throat> that they oughtn't, and you decline to pass judgment. You say, yes, I know that, that what you've just done is, is not right, but I'm not going to blame you for it. I am not going to cast any aspersions on you for having done that, I'm going to say, you know what, you're human, and you made a mistake. We all make mistakes. Forgiveness is when someone has wronged you or your community, and you feel that wound personally. A wrong has been done to you. But rather than seeking recompense for that wrong, you say, I'm going to let my right of punishment go. I am not going to seek recompense. I'm not going to hold that wrong against you. I'm going to acknowledge that you hurt me, and then I'm going to let it go. And it doesn't mean to forget. People say forgive and forget. We don't forget. We do forgive. And I've heard many people say, well, I know God wants me to forgive so-and-so, but I can't. That's unforgivable. Again, be careful anytime you're saying you know better than God. Probably something you need to look at. But why is it so hard for us? Jesus says this is easy and light. Well, it is in comparison. It is a lot easier to live by faith and to offer grace and mercy and forgiveness than it is to count all of the wrongs. All of the wrongs that you have done and all of the wrongs everyone has done to you. Keeping track of all of those things is a burden on your soul. It is a heavy weight, and it will make you bitter and angry <coughs> and resentful. And God doesn't want that for us. And that's why God wants us to forgive. Because when we forgive, we're really not doing it for the other person. We're doing it for us. Because if you don't forgive, what you're doing is you're taking that hurt that they have done, and you are holding it close to your heart, and you're letting it hurt you over and over and over. And that's foolish. If we forgive, we're taking that part and we're saying, man, that really sucked. But God, I trust you to take care of it. I don't let it go. 
And then we can move forward and live under that yoke that Jesus promises us is easy and light. It's a lot easier and lighter than holding everybody else's faults and our own close to our hearts. So live free. Live with grace, forgiveness, and mercy.
Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. O oh God, our rock and refuge, hear the prayers of your people this day, both those here present and those joining us online. Keep us safe in your care and strengthen us with your grace, that we may pray to you faithfully and love one another boldly, following the example of Jesus, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God, our Lord's mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have had time to witness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world we have created. We repent of the evil we have done, and the evil side of our behalf. Forgive us, O Lord, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Give you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.
And so if you're interested in that trip, let Mary Ann know so she can write your name down and reserve you a spot because we're looking for between 25 and 30 people to go on that trip. And I don't want anybody here to not get a chance to go if they're interested in going because everybody else in the diocese is signed up. Uh, all right, and we're going to bless this blanket and this prayer shawl in just a minute, but I wanted to highlight that we have little prayer squares out there in the narthex as well. And one of our parishioners shared a story with me that they mailed one of the prayer shawl squares to somebody in another state that they knew was having a tough time so that they could have that to help remind them that people care about them and praying for them. <clears throat> I thought, what a wonderful way to do it. I had not thought of mailing it to other people. I always think of it as handing it to someone. <clears throat> so just an idea there, if you know somebody in another state that could use a reminder that folks are praying for them, grab a couple little prayer shawl squares and mail them out. If we empty that basket, I am sure our knitting and crocheting group will be happy to refill it for us. Alright, so we're going to bless this prayer shawl. Anybody else would like to come up for blessings? Uh, travelers, uh, anniversaries, birthdays, or surgeries? Anybody? Okay, we'll just bless the blessing. All right, blessings are community events, so if y'all could extend your hands like this, thank you. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless this prayer shawl, that the person who receives it would know that it was created with love and care, and that the prayers of all this congregation are going towards them. And we pray that they would know in their heart that you are with them. All this we ask in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to tell all nations, and promised to be with them always, even to the end of ages. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thank 